Hey, what's up? I got some more lore content for you guys. Alongside my recent three decks for beginners video, I also wanted to provide some more easy to craft decks for newer and intermediate players. I'll be covering each region one after another, that way you have a direction to go based on your favorite region. Hello, my name is Tempo and I've hit master tier every season since the beta, even peaking rank 1 multiple times on the North American ladder, and I will be your guide to Legends of Runeterra. So small disclaimer before I get into the first one, these decks won't be able to be crafted day 1. These are primarily meant as solid cores to go for after a few weeks of playing and understanding which regions or playstyles you enjoy the most. If you want the easiest and most budget decks to craft, I recommend checking out my 3 decks for beginners video from a few weeks ago. And we're heading to the city of progress, Piltover. And Zon's here too, I guess. And we're starting off with the Piltover menace himself, Teemo. Since you do get a couple Teemos from the Shrooms and Boom starter deck, I wanted to cover him first as he just makes the most sense, and a lot of players gravitate towards his really annoying mushroom puffcat planting playstyle. It's pretty funny how Teemo is a menace in both games. So starting us off, we have a couple Brittle Steel, so we are in Freljord for the second region. Honestly, this deck is super easy to craft, especially if you've been following along and you've crafted the cards from the uh, Freljord decks then this one should be pretty easy too. You just need to grab your triple Caitlyn's and also one Epic, just one Karina is all that's necessary for this deck, and then you'll have yourself a pretty easy to play beginner puff cap deck. So yeah, then we got the Brittle Steel, one mana burst speed spell, frostbite an enemy with three or less health. This helps a lot because there's a lot of challenger units in the meta, and they're going to be trying to grab your Teemo. This is really nice at just stopping them, right? And then Teemo gets to live, and then you get to swing with him and continue being annoying. Same with Elixir of Iron, this is here for a team of protection, also pretty good for Caitlyn as well. 1 mana burst speed spell, give an ally 0-2. Really nice when uh, things are trying to grab your dudes, or if they're trying to shoot your dudes with uh, removal spells. And we have Teemo, he's a 1 mana 1-1 one, one elusive, so he can only be blocked by enemy elusive units, or units that can block elusive like Omen and Badger Bear. Nexus Strike, so if he hits the enemy Nexus, plant 5 poison puff caps in the enemy deck. Poison Puff Caps say, deal one to your Nexus. So if the opponent draws a card with any amount of Puff Caps on it, they will take X amount of damage. So if they draw a card with five Mushrooms, ah, they're taking five. So that's basically how it works. He levels up if you planted 15 Poison Puff Caps, and then he becomes super annoying Teemo that doubles the amount of Poison Puff Caps in the opponent's deck whenever he Nexus Strikes. So if they have 30, all of a sudden now they have 60, and it becomes really, really easy to close out the game once you have that many Puff Caps in the opponent's deck. Next we have a couple three sisters. This is a flexible uh, card from Freljord where we can use Frostbiting, we can use Big Buff, or we can use Entomb as just like a pseudo vengeance, kind of just like put something away for a couple turns and then it comes back. So basically depending on what we need, we have access to any of these. Next we have Clump of Wumps, 2 mana 2-2. Two, two. When I'm summoned, create a Mushroom Cloud in hand. Mushroom Cloud is a 1 mana burst speed spell that just plants 5. Makes it easier to level Teemo, makes uh, the opponent take more damage when they draw the Puff Caps, and stuff like that. Pretty good, just Mushroom Synergy. Next we have Triple Mystic Shot, since we are playing in PNZ. This can be used as removal to try to deal with the opponent's strategies, or we can actually reserve this for face damage and try to close out games through direct damage lethals with Puff Caps and Mystics. Next we have Triple Sky Splitter, 2 mana burst speed spell, give an ally plus 1 plus 3. Very strong combat trick, probably the best one in the game right now. So Freljord has access to it, so we are running Freljord to help protect our Teemo, help protect our Caitlyn, help them out uh, in, in case they're getting challenged or shot at. Next we have another really strong new card, Yadulski Snowdog, 2 mana 2 3, attack, grant the top 2 allies in your deck plus 1 plus 1. Really good in case you hit your mid game units like your Caitlyn or any of your 4 drops, really really nice. Next we have Caitlyn herself, 3 mana 3-3, three, three. quick attack, strike, plant 2, flash bomb traps in the top 8 cards of your deck. So now we have a new trap to talk about. Flash bombs deal 1 damage to a random ally, so this is from the perspective of the person drawing the trap. So if you're playing Caitlyn, the opponent draws a flash bomb trap, one of their units takes 1 damage. And this can also stack just like mushrooms can, so if you have multiple traps, they'll take multiple damage. And then she levels up if 5 of your traps have been activated, this can be the flash bombs or the mushrooms, so she levels up pretty reliably in the mid game. And then on strike, she plants 4 flash bomb traps in the top 8 instead of 2, and she also deals damage to the amount of traps that have been activated. So if the opponent draws, like, let's say a combination of five puff caps and two flash bombs, that's seven traps that have been activated. Caitlyn on strike will deal seven direct damage to the enemy nexus, which is just an obscene amount. So of course you can get this up to like, you know, they take 10 traps and then all of a sudden Caitlyn hits for 10 and you just kind of killed them. So really, really scary card. 
And next we have Insider Knowledge. 3 mana fast feed spell, all players draw 2. This is obviously the best in the late game when the opponent already has a bunch of traps in their deck, whether it be shrooms or flash bombs, and then they just take a bunch of damage all in one go. It's really nice to combo this when Caitlyn is already level 2, because this will actually make her strike deal more if you resolve the insider knowledge first. And that's pretty nifty, but for the most part, this is just going to be to finish off the opponent, make them draw like the final amounts of damage that you need based on how many puff caps are in their deck and how much HP they have. And next we have Puff Cap Peddler, 3 mana 3 3. When you play a spell, plant 3 poison puff caps in the enemy deck. This is constant, so if you just keep slamming spells, he will keep planting 3. This has really nice synergy with the Clump of Wumps, because then you can play 1 mana, plant 5, and then if the Puff Cap Peddler sees this, he'll plant an additional 3. So that's really good value, and then you can just like protect the Peddler with your Sky Splitter, Elixir of Iron, stuff like that. And then you'll start like just slamming puff caps into the opponent's deck, so that feels fantastic. And next we have a new card, actually. This is one that I've come across a few times when I'm fighting Team OK, and it's pretty interesting. It's a 4-mana 4-4 named Charlatan Fishmonger. Round start, all players draw 1, then grant your opponent's card Fleeting. Fleeting says that it's discarded at the end of the round if it's not used. So this is really interesting because it makes your opponent's hands really clunky. They have to play out the card that they top deck and that has Fleeting, or they risk losing it forever. So because he makes them kind of uncomfortable, I think he's a really solid card. On top of the fact that he's drawing them extra, so they take more puff cap damage and flash bomb traps as well, and you get to draw one too. So you get to dig deeper into your deck and find more protection, find more puff caps. So honestly, it's just overall a really good card, especially at the 4-4 stat line. Next, we have another 4-4, Chump Wump. When I'm summoned, create two mushroom clouds in hand. So he's just like a bigger version of the Clump of Wumps. Very good, very nice. Just get more clouds. Next, we have two Harsh Winds for protection, and because we're just in Freljord, really nice to slow down the game, stop really big developments from the opponent as we continue developing Mushrooms into their deck. And then finally, we have one of Karina Mastermind. We could probably run this at two if you have the extra epic, but, you know, I want to make sure this is nice and cheap, so only one epic required for this list. Six mana, five, five. She says, play. Plant five Flash Bomb Traps in the top five cards of the enemy deck, or activate the effects of all traps in the top five cards so you get to choose like nine out of ten times since we're only running her at one of we're going to be using her activate skill that way we can activate all the puff caps that are on the top five of the opponent's deck so if there's 20 shrooms in there well we just shoot the enemy nexus for 20 once this skill resolves what's really cool about this is that the traps don't go away it doesn't like uh, burn them or anything it just activates them and then they stay there another thing this deck does well is it counters all of the decks that want to draw a whole bunch so this is a really good answer to like jan and neela of course um it's not super popular anymore but pretty much anything that just wants to turbo draw they're gonna take a lot of puff cap damage so keep that in mind really cool uh, against those decks and also really good against most demacia strategies because we have frostbite so we can kind of slow down and stop their strike spells that's really important. Being able to frostbite something as a response to like single combat feels really good. So this deck should be able to eat some of the meta decks alive and you'll have fun doing so. And that's it for the deck rundown. Now here's a live commentary game so you can see how it plays out. I'll be giving context to why I'm playing certain cards and hopefully it gives you a good feel on how to play the deck. And for the example game, we're going to be fighting Shivana Elder Dragon. A uh, meta classic right now. Very, very strong. Actually, the deck I used to hit Master this season as well. Teemo on attack one. Let's go. That always feels fantastic. Let's go ahead and get rid of Chump Wump and Insider Knowledge because I want to maximize seeing other protection spells. And probably also Caitlyn, our other champion, would be nice. So we can play her on attack three. Bom, bom. Nice. Perfect. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Teemo on one. Then we float two mana. So we have Sky Splitter. And then we play Caitlyn on attack three. With Sky Splitter backup. And then turn four onwards, we have three sisters plus flash freeze to stop their strike spells. So this is honestly just a perfect hand here. What are they going to play? Challenger unit maybe? Three, two? Nope, nothing. Pass. Perfect. They're going to be so annoyed with us. We have Teemo on attack one, Caitlyn on attack three. Badger bear, wow. So now they can block Teemo. Hmm... This is pretty annoying, because if they're on form up, they can also put this up to a 6-6, six, six, which means that our Caitlyn would still die to the Badger Bear. So honestly, this is a perfect attack deterrent. Not all versions of this deck are running Badger Bear. To be honest, I haven't even seen Badger Bear, so that's a kind of crazy call by them. But uh, yeah, it's uh, pretty annoying for me. 
I can't really play into this because if they're on form up, I mean, I just lose out entirely. We can develop Peddler though. What's this? Pioneer. Turn off keywords probably. Mm. Wow. My hand was really good, but apparently their hand is a perfect answer. So we'll see what we can do with this. Of Cat Peddler. This allows us to be on Elixir of Iron and also Sky Splitter this turn. Go ahead and Sky Splitter this. Or we could do Elixir of Iron. Looks of iron's cheaper and easier to use. Go. go ahead and do that. Nice. Okay. I don't think they have form up then. They definitely would have tried it, right? I think they would have tried it. Let's do a little clump of wumps this turn. We still have five mana to work with. I would like to level this team out. Oh my goodness, Mage Seeker Jr. That's also not normally run in their deck. Uh, okay, you do know that your own Explorer spell costs more now, right? All right, J just saying. That is interesting. So, wow, that hurts my hand completely. Scoping the area. I guess we can just swing with Caitlyn and call it a day. My Teemo doesn't really get to do much. Oh, get that in there. And play clump. Ass. Yeah, this hurts our hand quite a bit. Another peddler. Hmm. How am I gonna get this junior killed? Another pioneer. All right. Uh, I'll play another peddler then. All good. Pioneer, grab Timo. Pioneer, grab Caitlyn. Are they going to proactively throw a form up on there? No. They're, hmm. It's rather interesting, isn't it? Down to just do this, I guess? That's a really weird grab. I don't really know what the point of that was. Do another mushroom. For fun. <laughs> yeah, we got a bunch of shrooms in there so far. It'd be nice if we could get the fishmonger. Because we'll start messing with their hand too. Oh, there's our fishmonger. Exactly what I'm looking for. Let's send both of these. Let's also... Uh, I mean, at this point, we could full send and then just try to win through puff caps. This might be the last turn that we get all of this in. They can even block my team, though. I don't really care, right? I just want to be ahead on the board. We could do three sisters, flash freeze. That costs, oh, well, seven. Seven total mana. I'm kind of down, though, right? Just gonna try to get in as much as I can here. Three sisters. Or we let this trade go through and then we play Charlatan. Yeah. Like, look at how good our board state is. Let's just resolve it. You kill one peddler. Kill Timmy. So be it. Now, we fishmonger and then they're gonna start drawing the shrews. Alatis. Alright. Ballinger. You got it. Charlatan. And I think I want to get this extra Mushroom Cloud in while I can. Because it's nice and cheap now since the... The, um... What was his name? The guy that was increasing my spells died. Mage Seeker Jr., that's him. Get him out of here. Alright, let's go Fishmonger. Draw me an Elixir. Draw them two Shrooms. Two Flash Bombs. Caitlyn's leveled. Aim to win, and my aim is excellent. Now Caitlyn will deal four on her strike. And we can just spam Shroom still. Fire Spitter. Nope. Not gonna happen. You better heal. We use Elixir of Iron to protect Caitlyn. And then we can play a Chump Wump. Wump. And then we'll probably do a three sisters flash freeze on one of these challengers. 
And we also have open attack. Like, look how strong we are. <laughs> Four, two. And you're killing my Charles. And you know what? That makes sense. But let's go ahead and do three sisters and flash rays. And then Caitlyn's going to strike for four. Bonk. And then Mushroom Cloud. And then I'm just going to commit to a full open attack here. Nice. So, they have 47 mushrooms in their deck. Oh my goodness. Oh, they just took six. Let's go. <laughs> Don't even have to attack. Puff cap lethal. Another criminal and for the next one, we have Jinx discard. If you enjoy the discard archetype in other card games, then you will probably like this deck as well. PNZ is home to some of the most discard synergistic cards, but we're also dipping into Bandle City for more synergies. This deck only needs one champion, which is Jinx, so that's super nice. If you really want to, you can also craft Kennen and throw him in as well because his Mark of the Storm is a good discard target. But yeah, for the most part, you only need triple Jinx and then you're good to go. The rest of the deck is comprised of commons and rares, except for a couple Clockling, but you can substitute him out just fine if you don't have the epics. You can do like third Sump Dredger, third Arena Promoter, but yeah, let's talk about each card individually. Starting us off, we have Triple Bird the Bell Ringer, 1 mana 2 1. When I'm summoned, plant a chime on the top card of your deck, so the next turn you will draw it and give a random unit in your hand, plus 1, plus 1. Pretty similar to like an Omen Hawk type deal, just a nice plus 1, plus 1 buff, especially good if it hits our champion. Next we have Double Pie Toss, we can use this for some removal in the early game, and then Perilous Pastry comes to our hand, we can use this for Nexus damage or for pinging off other 1 HP enemies. And then we have Yordle Squire, 1 minute to 1, create a Tiny Spear or a Tiny Shield in hand, you get to pick. Tiny Spear is a plus 1 boost, Shield is a plus 1 HP boost. Sometimes you can just like discard these and that's pretty cool, other times you can use these as uh, just little buffs. Next we have Zonai Urchin, really good one drop, 1 mana to 1, play, discard a card to draw 1. So it cycles itself, which is super cool, you get to get some discard synergies going, maybe even empty your hand a little bit, and help level Jinx later. Next we have Boom Baboon, 2 mana, 2, 1, when I'm summoned, create a Flame Chompers in hand. Flame Chompers wants to be targeted and discarded because, on discard, summon it, and it's a challenger unit, which is really cool, so you can start manipulating combat in your favor. You can even put the plus one tiny spear on this and make this trade into like one ones, and that feels really good too. Next we have Electro Harpoon coming in from Bandle City, two mana slow speed spell, two play, discard one, so that's nice, we got the discard synergy, deal two to a unit, and also two to the enemy Nexus, so we get to double dip some damage. This is a two for one deal, really cool. So yeah, deal two, so it's slow speed, mystic shot, shoot something, while also mystic shotting the opponent's face. Next we have Flame Chompers, 2 mana 0, 2 Challenger, already talked about that, really really good card. Triple Mystic Shot for direct damage to the enemy face, sometimes we use this as removal as well, but this is a very aggressive like burn deck where we want to just dump our hand, attack a whole bunch, and then use direct damage to close out the game, so Mystic Shot oftentimes just shoots the enemy Nexus. Next we have Double Rummage, 2 play, discard up to 2 cards, draw 1 for each card you discarded, so it's a minus 2 plus 2, which is really nifty. This is really nice at like just finishing off your hand, discarding it so that Jinx can level, because she needs to see your hand empty. So Rummage is really good at leveling Jinx herself, and then you get to play more cards later. Next we have Triple Squeaker, another good Bandle City card, 2 mana 1 2, Augment. When you play a created card, grant me 1 0. Created cards are from their own uh, effect, so we can do like discard 1, manifest a Mecha Yordle. Mecha Yordles are really strong units that you get to um, pick. You put it in your hand, then you can play it later. When you play it, Squeaker will also gain attack. Next we have Sump Dredger, 3 mana 4 3, play, discard a card to draw 1, just like Zonai Urchin, same thing. Uh, 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 and it's just like a way bigger dude for three mana. So really, really good. Next, we have Arena Promoter, another Mecha Yordle Manifester, four mana, four, three, tough. Play, discard one, two, manifest a Mecha Yordle and reduce its cost by one. Really strong to get that mana discount. If you want to know what the Mecha Yordles are and you want to just see what you're playing around, you can go up here and click the slider, scroll down to Mecha Yordles, and then you can look at the full collection of them. These are all generatable from our Arena Promoter and also our Squeaker. Next we have two Augmented Clockling, 4 mana 2-2 two, two Elusive, 
play, predict, then draw one and reduce its cost by one. Oftentimes we're looking for direct damage with this, like blowback, stuff like that. We can also find, you know, other discard synergy cards, whether we need a target or if we need an activator. Clockling can help fill that out. Also really nice at finding Jinx and discounting her too. So yeah, super good overall. The elusive damage does come in uh, pretty clutch sometimes, but again, if you don't have the epics to spend on this clock, definitely just up the Sump and the Arena Promoter to three each and you should be good to go. Next we have a blowback for mana fast speed spell. Deal one to an enemy and the enemy nexus. If you discard up to two, you can also increase the damage by one for each card discarded. So you can deal up to three damage to a unit and also the opponent's nexus at the same time, which is really cool. Something that you should keep in mind is you don't have to discard anything for blowback. If it's like the last card in your hand, you can just do blowback for one and that will level Jinx if she's on the board. You can discard one card and that will deal two damage or you discard two cards and that does three damage. So really, really good, especially as a burn finisher as well. This is like really good direct damage for lethals. And lastly, to round us out, Jinx is our highest cost card, and it also is our only champion, just basically showing how aggressive this deck is and how cheap the deck is as well. All 1-4 to four cost cards. She has quick attack, and also she levels up if she sees your hand empty, so you want her on the board, and then you uh, play out your entire hand, empty it up, and then you are rewarded with level 2 Jinx. Level 2 Jinx gives you an additional draw 1 each round, that way, yes you go low on resources, but you kind of refill them back over a couple turns, which is super cool, and also the first time that you empty your hand each round, create a super mega death rocket. This is going to be one of our most important cards, we want to get Jinx leveled right away. Jinx also gets the super mega death rocket the turn that she levels, so that's super important to keep in mind. It's a 1 mana slow speed spell that says, deal 3 to the enemy nexus directly, one to all enemies so it's super nice if the opponent has just like a bunch of one hp dudes you get to clear the entire board while dealing three direct damage to the enemy face for just one and then again you can keep doing this every turn so jinx will draw you two essentially right one from round start one from her own effect then you play those you get another rocket and you just kind of keep chipping away at your opponent until they die and that's really nice especially when we get to our blowback and stuff and like these are the last cards in our hand blowback mystic we just start shooting the opponent's nexus and then we combine that with the super mega death rocket damage and we just close out the games from there and that's it for the deck rundown now here's a live commentary game so you can see how it plays out and for this example game we're going to be fighting another meta deck morgana mordekaiser aka eminem that's what i call them because it's just easier to say so we have bird we have mystic double blowback like that's way too much blowback we want to draw into this later as like a finisher card so we're going to go ahead and pitch both we definitely like mystic shot because we can react to their kill spells with that they try to use hate spike or death grasp hey we can react with mystic shot and nullify it we drew back into a blowback and we got another mystic all right Let's do bird on turn one. Boom. So next turn, our boom baboon or a top deck unit's gonna gain plus one plus one. Let's see what it is. Another bird. We hit the boom baboon, so I kind of want to just go ahead and play that. We have a two one and a three two. Ceaseless sentry. All right. Go ahead and swing with both. They get to draw, which is fine. We kind of want their board to be empty so they don't have targets for their self-slaying. That's kind of the most important thing for this matchup. We can play out Bird, and I guess that's it, right? Bird. I'm also kind of down to use a Mystic here. Just because they're, they're tapped to one, which means they can't respond. No Glimpse Beyond, no Hate Spike, those both cost two, so we can just go ahead and get rid of that four two. Yeah, your little squire, cool. Yep, clock got hit. So that's a 4 mana 3-3 three, three elusive. I kind of like sending that in right now. And then we can find a 0 mana pie toss, which sounds so broken. A rummage or a harpoon. I want the pie toss. Because they play a lot of 1 HP units, and they could be on one of those, and then like hate spike. Ooh, that's a bad card for me to deal with, actually. I can't play spells until I get rid of that. Uh, I'm going to send it, though. We just need to play aggressive. They're going to value trade and then swing into my yep clock, but I need to get the damage in. We have a lot of direct damage, so we're going to need to send it, you know? Not the suppression. Anything but that. Hopefully no Morgana. Lifesteal is actually a big issue for me. Anyone Inquisitor again. Well, have to play it. And then we can also do Yodel Squire for funsies. We'll do the spear. And these tough units are really not good for me. 
Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Wait, that's this is wrong order. This is wrong order. If they do 3-2-2-1 like this, this unit gets to live. They just chose to sack both of their units for free. One of them always dies, but this one did not have to die, because you do 3-2-2-1, two, two, and then it would live. And then both my units would die. But that's okay, don't tell them. I will take what I can get right now. I will take what I can get for sure. Another bird, okay. Um... I guess we just open attack, to be honest, before they can play anything defensive. We have three damage, five damage, six, seven, seven total damage. Bird. Spirit Leash. Makes sense. Yep. Let's do... Humper. Man, they just drew three off of that. That's kind of insane. Um, Ass, yeah. If it's just Mord, I'm not worried. Jinx, huh? I think Jinx is just gonna die to Vengeance. But we can try to get her down. If they don't play Mord and they play below Vengeance, she actually has a pretty decent chance of living. Because I can interact with Death Grasp and stuff. Yeah, let's do Suppression and Jinx. She's a 5-4 right now, so they can't really threaten her with the Challenger unit. Kind of mad that they drew all three of their Inquisitors, by the way. So I lost six mana. Trying to get rid of my Suppressions. Death Grasp, yeah, that's not going to work. I refuse to let that fly. Definitely no thank you. Since uh, this resolves first, this loses target, so it fizzles. Meh. Very cool. Very, very nice for me. Pass. Grab. Chomper. This makes sense. That's pretty annoying. It does make sense, though. Uh -uh. Arena promoter. promoter. Like, why do I feel like we're just going to get vengeance, bruh? Like, why do I feel like that? I'm pretty sure we're just going to get vengeance. Straight up. What I kind of want to do is, hey, we're just going to get Vengeance. That's just Arena Promoter, get rid of Tiny Spear. This seems easier to me. You had Mecha Forcer. One mana Mecha Forcer is really good. Don't you Vengeance me. If you do, I'm going to discard my stuff. As a response, and then I'm gonna get Super Mega Death Rocket. Okay, it's Icon, hello. Same thing, don't do it. Don't vengeance me, bruh. I will not be a happy camper. Although, my current plan right now, by the way, in case you're following along, is blowback. Discard both of these. I can actually play this for free, funnily enough, and then blow back the other pie. Okay, there's the Vengeance. So, yeah, I'm just going to do this. Discard both, and then cast Super Mega Death Rocket for one. Ah, I love that we can do this as a response. So we get the level up before the Vengeance even resolves. So we're going to shoot the Inquisitor. We're also dealing three to the opponent's face. Super Mega Death Rocket clears the units that they just put down to uh, block with. And then we have a lot of attack pressure. What's this? Oh, it's Glimpse. Sure, I don't care. I was kind of worried it was Hate Spike, because Hate Spike would prevent more damage. But, like, obviously, we don't care. We just Super Mega Death Rocket, and then we attack, and we have Lethal. I knew Vengeance was coming. I was trying to play around that the entire turn. Really fun animation. Love the Star Guardian skin. Pop, uh, pop. Uh. Support effect. Extra damage. Nice and clean there. And the final deck I have for you is another Teemo deck because we do get him from the Shrooms and Booms, so this just ends up being like one of the more easier ones to craft. However, this is going to be the most expensive deck in the video if you want to play it optimized. We do have to get the extra champion, but also this deck uses like 
epics for some of its upgrades. So write this down right now, take note of this. If you want to play this deck at its best, you're going to want to replace Otterpus, which is in here as a common, right? Because this is kind of budget. For Acorn the Hex Technician, it's an epic. You also want to replace Sting Officer, okay? With Skip King of the Reef, another epic. So keep that in mind, write that down. If you have the epics, trade out Otterpus for Acorn, trade out Sting for Skip. And then you are pretty much good to go. It's like fully optimized and it's just like really expensive. This is the more budget version to get you into the archetype if you want to play Teemo Elusive Aggro. So what this deck wants to do is a lot like the last one where we want to play aggressive, swarm the board, attack relentlessly, but we're not discarding. Instead, we're just setting up elusive units that are hard to block and then attacking with them over and over and making it really hard for the opponent to come up with counterplay. Starting us off, we have Vandal Tellstones. This can be direct damage to the enemy face, or it can be Heroic Frame, which is a plus two plus one boost. Really good for protection and really good for direct damage as well. We stick this on our elusives and we punch even harder. Uh, sometimes there's this, but I've never seen this card actually resolve. I guess it's good against landmarks. So if you fight like a really heavy landmark deck, then Bandal Tellstones can come up as like an out to that. But we are running an Explorer, so I think that would just be better there. But I digress. Bandal Tellstones, really good card. Next, we have Bird the Bellringer for the same reason as the last deck, just a really good one drop. Uh, we care a lot about our stats because we want to put these on our elusives. That way they hit directly and uh, do even more damage. So Bird, really, really good. And next we have Otterpus instead of Acorn. Again, replace this with Acorn. But the Otterpus has a, a tune and then also a good effect to create a prank. This allows you to mess with the opponent's hand. Also, this unit pays for itself since you are attuning. As long as you're playing the prank, it's uh, really, really efficient. You get some hand knowledge on the opponent and you get to uh, make something hard for the opponent to play. Next, we have Double Pie Toss to help in the early game whittle down some 1 HP units, take them out and then we can use this for direct damage or finish off other 1 HP units. Next we have Teemo. We're not really playing around his level up at all. We just care about him as a elusive body and then also playing around him later, like putting Yumi on him and stuff like that. So yeah, we're not really like all ending the puff caps like we were with the Teemo Caitlyn. We're just using him as an elusive attacker. Next we have Bandle Commando, two mana one two, also an elusive attacker. Next to strike, create a hungry outcast. So she gives you a unit you can block with or continue pressuring with. It's a one mana two one with spell shield. Honestly, really annoying. You get a couple of Bandle, uh, Bandle Commandos down, attack with multiple of them, and then you have like Alcats just swarming the board, and that feels really strong, especially if you get ahead. Next, we have Kelp Maidens, another elusive attacker, 2 2 1. Next to strike, create a prank in hand. So, again, just like Otterpus, we're going to be messing with the opponent's hand. Really disgusting if you open Otterpus and like multiple Kelp Maidens. The opponent's hand just becomes unplayable because you make all their like cards cost more, and it's just absolutely insane. You'll probably make people rage quit playing this deck. So, there's that added bonus too. Next, we have Triple Mystic Shot, using it as unit removal or primarily face damage in this deck. Sting Officer, 2 mana 1 2, elusive. Next to strike, plant 2 flash bomb traps in the opponent's deck. So if they draw into these, then their units will take damage. And uh, yeah, you basically get to speed up your strategy by hitting with elusive and slowing the opponent's strategy down at the same time. Again, this is better if you play Skip King of the Reef, so I would replace him as soon as you can. Still a really good card. Next we have Heroic Reframe, 3 mana burst speed spell, give allies 2-1, we cover this in the Tellstones. Really good card to just hard run as well, really good for protection, really good for extra damage. Octo Adventurer, this is our Explorer of choice, 3 mana 1-4, elusive of course. Play, pick an Explorer spell to create in hand. We can destroy a enemy weapon, which is good against those equipment based decks like Jaxorn, Kane Aatrox, stuff like that. We can destroy an opponent's landmark if they're developing a bunch of landmarks, really good against sigils and other landmark based strategies. Turn off keywords. This counts as opponents elusives as well, so they can't block us. Really cool. We can also turn off like overwhelm, lifesteal, things like that. And then also heal in case we need to uh, race against aggro burn and like heal past their damage, then that can come up too. But honestly, just a very well-rounded card. The fact that it's elusive is super nice. Next we have Yumi. Yumi is played as an attachment, so what we want to do is put her on top of one of our other units and then she grants it her stats, which is plus two plus two. Honestly, if we hit her with bird and she gives something plus three, that's even better. That's actually kind of insane. I don't see that happen too often, but that is a high roll that can come up. So let's say we have any of our elusives down, we put Yumi on it, it's going to gain plus two plus two, and then every round start it gains another plus one plus one, which is really annoying because basically if the opponent doesn't come up with a early out to Yumi, then the unit's just going to get out of control and you basically get to win with it straight up. 
She levels up if the unit that she's attached to attacks three separate times, and if they do, now she also gives it Spell Shield, which makes it even harder to deal with, so basically it's a snowball effect. If the opponent can't deal with it, they just lost. Next we have two Yep Clock coming in, 4 mana 2-2, two, two, Elusive, Predict, Play, Draw 1, really cool. We can like get some direct damage, stuff like that, or more Elusives, or Heroic Frame, or Tellstones. All good options, and also it's, it's an Elusive Attacker, so we love that. Blowback for direct damage, Burn Lethal, just like we did in Discard. And then Eye of the Storm to round us out, give an ally plus 2 attack this round, and draw 2. Really good on our Elusives, get more damage in, draw more cards, that way we can get to Burn Lethals. Really, really cheesy, really cheeky stuff. So yeah, this deck really preys upon the opponent's decks not having proper outs. So this is one of the better ones to play when you are a new player, because the opponents are going to play like less refined strategies. They're going to be playing their fun decks and you fully get to abuse that aspect. This deck is so oppressive against decks that are not like well equipped to deal with it. So yeah, I would recommend this. It's actually not hard to play either. You just like full send. You just put elusives down, put Yumi on your elusives and attack over and over and then kill them with direct damage. So yeah, definitely give it a shot if you want some cheap and easy wins. And that's it for the deck rundown. Now here's a live commentary game so you can see how it plays out. And for the example game, we're going to be fighting Elder Dragon Elites. They do have blocking Badger Bear, which is annoying. They also have strike spells. So, wow, what is this hand? We want to get rid of all of this. We can actually keep one Mystic for uh, Battlesmith if we care about that. And I think I do. Keeping Mystic against Battlesmith is always super nice. Would recommend. Teemo on one. Hopefully he lives. Yumi on three. Love all that. Ram Hound. You know, it might be better to play Otterpus on one then. Rather than Teemo. We can play Teemo on two. Pass. Yeah. So let's go ahead and play Timmy. See what they do. And me. If they play Battlesmith, we Mystic Shot. Okay, no Battlesmith. I think that means we play Bird and we Prank. Yeah. Let's Prank first. What you got in there? Oh, I see. Minus two power and vulnerable. Minus two power and vulnerable on this. If we pick this one, this card becomes useless. Grant minus two power, so it's going to be a zero one challenger that summons another zero one. Yo, I'm picking that every day. What? That's so funny. This card just became useless to them. And we play bird. Let's go prank. And we can send it. Bonk, bonk, bonk. And then they're probably going to play blocking Badger Bear on three if they have it. If not, then it might be a little doom for them. Hit Yumi. Oh, it hit Yumi. Oh my goodness. Okay, they top deck blocking Badger Bear. That's so lucky, actually. Let's attach Yumi to Teemo. So he's now going to be a 4 4 right now, which is disgusting. Double attack. Uh, I'm down to block with Otterpus. That way I'm taking three less damage. Kind of like that. Let's go, Teemo. Grow up to a 5-5. Five five. Now we can out damage that Badger Bear. Um, We can send. Yeah, I'm probably committing to a, a Rolk or Frame this turn, maybe. Nice, okay. No, we don't even have to then. We're just going to kill the Badger Bear and go next. We also got to kill this for free. I don't know why they wouldn't trade 3-3 into this. This doesn't make a lot of sense. Alright. Pretty satisfactory result. Keep growing. Uh, we can play Bird. Okay, this Ardent Tracker is actually going to be really annoying. Nice. Random Shroom. Garen? Oh! What does that do? Garen just makes these one twos. Not that scary. Sting Officer. Right. That's fine too. I go to four. But I think I could just straight up kill them next turn, right? Mm, I think so. Uh, yeah. Let's just full send our damage. I think we're really rude. Let's Mystic Shot the opponent's face. That way we're not burning too much mana. We need to have enough mana to play all this. 
So, Mystic Face. And then we're just gonna commit to an open lethal, ideally. Look how much damage we're already threatening. We have blowback too. That puts them down to three. Huh. To be honest, we could actually just straight up do that. Because that will threaten blowback. We don't have to do anything yet. I guess this plays into Fire Spitter. No, it doesn't, because yeah, if they do ocean, then we just do this as a response. Ah, uh, that's just direct damage lethal. We could also have done like the direct, um, the buffs and stuff, but I didn't want to play into strike spells. I'm just holding, making sure that we uh, play guaranteed damage there. Let's go. Just dead on six, I guess. And that's it for Piltover and Zon. Extra shout out to the patrons on screen. Much love and thank you for supporting. So for some closing thoughts, PNC is probably one of the harder regions for new players to get into because the tutorial decks do not favor PNZ like at all. I wanted to make sure I preserved some important region identities with this video, so I showcased puff caps, discard, and direct damage decks because those are the easiest PNZ aspects for new players to understand. Things like Seraphine and Heimer Control are for more experienced players, so I kept them out. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to drop a sub if you're new and also a like for the algorithm. That way other new players can see this video. Thank you so much for watching and have a good one. Laters!